Well, here we are, back at it again. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about the ACs, and we're going to do a little bit more with the ACs. Okay, so we ran our tests on the ACs. I wasn't thrilled with the results. I still got good faith that what I'm doing is going to work, and it's going to work good. Uh, like I said in my previous video, we had an 8x24, was a reefer box, had five inches of insulation, top to bottom, okay, ceiling, walls, floor, that's the same setup I want to do because it deemed to be incredibly efficient. It showed me that for approximately 30 to 40 percent of the energy and power, I could cool that box down way further than I could uh, with a standard, let's say, travel trailer or camper running a whole lot more power. That entrance over there, shouldn't say entrance, but that space over there, which is the largest space of, of this command center project trailer here, is approximately a 27 by 8. Yeah, about a 27 by 8 with the slide out, which is slide out, I think another three feet it slides out. So it's good size space. I would have to say I think that space is probably about 25% bigger. Well, at about, I got two 18,000, I'm sorry, two 8,000 BTU units in a reefer box. So figure we have 16,000 BTU running in there and that's honestly a little bit of overkill because we have all those windows in there like I showed you, still pipes down, pipes down hard. A lot of the time I just use one AC, I don't even bother with the second one because I'll turn it on, walk away, and the next thing you know, I come back maybe 20, 30 minutes later, it is cold. Not cool, cold. That's what I want in this trailer. I like it real cold. I got high blood pressure. I'm overweight. I'm Hispanic. I get emotional. I get hot. So, yes, it's gotta be cold. So I needed to try to figure all this out, needed to figure it out quickly, so I did. So I did, I was going to go ahead and go with a different brand AC because the small AC, the first one that I tried to, to, to get this going about a year ago on one of my other boxes was a Toshiba window shaker. You know, AC wall unit, a little small 6,000 BTU. And I think cranked and cranked and cranked. Then I went ahead and I tried something a little different. Because the Toshibas, I thought they were pretty cool, but what I did notice is they were a little bit more money than what was online for sale. That Toshiba I purchased from Home Depot seemed to be okay. Worked pretty well. I wanted to save some dollars. I went with the Frigidaires for the other box. They were 8,000 BTU each. They work awesome. They really do. They did a really great job. The Frigidaires seemed to be a little bit more money, and they were a little bit wider also. The space I'm working with in between the rafters, I shouldn't say rafters, I should, studs. The studs, the wall studs on this trailer, they're gapped about 17 inches apart. There's spacing of about 17 inches in between them. So if I could find something, if I could find something that would fit in between them, that's what I wanted to do. The Toshiba was 16 inches wide. I put that in between the two rafters, uh, two studs. Worked great, fit right in. I didn't mess with the structural integrity at all of the trailer. So if I could avoid that, obviously I want to. They work great. Those 8,000 BTU units that I was looking at, they were a lot wider. They were about 18 and a half. It was gonna force me to have to cut into the studs. Where I decided to mount these AC units was in the slide out. And I did that because I didn't like the fact that I would have to cut into some heavy structural to put them anyplace else that I thought about putting them. So they needed to go into the slide out. I'm going to put them at the corners, and I'll show you that in a video shortly. I'll put them in the corners. I'm going to build tables above them. I'm going to put chairs next to them. You're not even going to know they're there. Regardless what goes in there, and regardless, if you want to put chairs in the slide out and hang out, you still want some end tables in there so that you can put your drinks on it or food or whatever the case, you know. So I didn't mind it. And at 16 inches, that's going to give me a sufficient amount of room to put a nice little narrow table directly above it. And it's also going to give me uh, enough room to build a slide in and slide out mechanism because I want these AC units to be able to slide in when we're traveling. <clears throat> 
Excuse me. AC's blowing right in my face. So that's another good thing about these AC wall units. Ice cold and you don't have to sit underneath a vent on your roof. You can sit in front of it. You know, you know. So anyhow, between the width of the 16 inches on the AC unit, the price being probably about the same, there was one other contributing factor. The AC unit that was 6,000 BTU that I bought originally, I put inside of a hole in the reefer box that was up about six feet. One day I was messing around with it, rearranging it. I left it kind of hanging. I didn't put it in good enough. I didn't adjust it. I didn't secure it. I didn't do anything. I just kind of left it there. And it fell. It fell six feet, slammed on the ground. I thought it was done. I said, Damn, man, I just lost some money on that deal. I picked it up. It had a couple of cracks in it. I fired it up. And it's been working ever since. Months and months have gone by. This is the same AC that's blowing on my face right now. Yeah, let me show you. This one. Now, you see what I'm talking about? You see, you got these right here. These rafters right here. Between here and here is 17 inches. This thing's 16. See the one inch? That's fine. I don't want to cut into these. I just don't. Now this poor AC unit. See the big crack? Yeah, big fell. So it fell and it fell hard. I'm gonna go ahead and show you where the new units are gonna go. So actually, what I did want to tell you is this morning I got up early. And I went and I purchased four of these units from Home Depot. I bit the bullet and I just did it. That was the end of that. I hated it. I didn't like it. I hate spending money half the time, especially when it's going to some big box company. And I feel like I'm kind of getting screwed. But what, what are you going to do? You know, I, I think everybody's kind of getting screwed on everything these days. I mean, you see what's going on with the economy and inflation and everything else. Excuse me. You know we're all taking a hit now because hurricane ian has destroyed everything over there on the west coast down here in southwest florida what's happening is they are depleting out all the home depot stuff and most of these big box stores uh supplies and materials because it's the closest and the quickest to get to them and i completely understand that but it's a good thing when i got the acs because they were pillaging these stores these stores were running out of everything. And I actually had an employee in there tell me that Home Depot has some kind of a setup going on in, in the Fort Myers and the Naples area. Uh, all those areas that have been hit where they're sending 10 employees per store on a weekly rotation to stay up there and to work those stores. I get the feeling they're probably keeping those stores open 24 hours or really extended hours and getting the materials in and out and working, out with the, uh, working it out with the first responders and also with the contractors and anybody and everybody else along with the volunteers and the homeowners to try to uh, patch everything up and get it going. So obviously, as you know, these things here, well, they're probably like gold over there. So it's a good thing I went this morning. I actually had to go to two Home Depots before I found them. I got them and we're good to go. Now, the 8,000 BTU, before I show you where I'm gonna put these, the 8,000 BTUs, were like i said about 17 inches wide 17 no 18 and a half inches wide but the other thing is i was only going to use two that puts us at about 16,000 btu altogether which is pretty good again it worked great in that other box i opted to run four of these so i'm going to do two and two and i'm going to put them in in between these studs in the slide out and they're going to slide in and they're gonna slide out in the future. But for functionality purposes today, I'm gonna to cut the holes and I'm gonna install them. Now, the great thing about all that is they're not that heavy, they're manageable, and if one goes down, well, hey, you got another three to keep it going. And again, four times six is 24 versus two times eight being 16. You just picked up a third more power and you're good to go. The other thing is they're a lot easier to power up. So if you get tied up where you're at the mercy of an itty bitty little generator, or a smaller setup, you can power up 
couple more of these units versus powering up, let's say, one big unit, which is another reason I wanted to go efficient. Not only do I want to go efficient to save fuel and to save energy and to try to go green, but in the event that I have to you run a smaller generator or I'm down to, let's say, 15 amp power, like an extension cord from somebody's house, it'll run these things. This thing behind me is running on like a 10, 15 amp breaker as we speak. This thing operating max is like five amps. So figure on all four out there, if you're gonna run 20 amps, that's fantastic. Let me show you. Here's a slide out. I went ahead and gutted this slide out and got all this rotten wood out along with the dead cockroaches, along with the live cockroaches, along with the whole village of things I didn't want in this trailer that were living and that rot and that crap and everything else. Got it all out, which is great. Here we are. I'll tell you a little later what we're gonna do with this slide out, but for the time being, we're gonna run these ACs. We're gonna put an AC right in this corner right here, two of them stacked. Let me back up to give you a little more perspective on how we're gonna do this. Now we're gonna run another two over there. We're gonna tie into the power. We got three dedicated circuits, or appears to be three dedicated circuits for the three overhead units, see? Right here, you got one overhead, two overhead, and in the rear, you have a third overhead. So what we're gonna do today is we'll probably tie into the power on those, and I'll do two and two, and we should be good to go. But for the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the holes today. We're gonna sit these things in there. We're gonna slide them out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug them in with extension cords. And then we're going to start running more cooling tests to see where we're at. And hopefully it all goes well, because if it doesn't, well, I'm going to get stuck with over $1,000 worth of little AC units. And I'm also going to get stuck with a couple extra holes in this thing that I didn't care for. But again, if you don't do it, how do you know? It's the gadget way. Here we go.